الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده بجميع محامده ونشكره ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى آله عدد خلقك ورضا نفسك وزينة عرشك ومداد كلماتك إمام الترمذي رحمه الله نريد هذا الحديث من سيدنا إمام أبو ذر من أرسو فساد من أرسو دسم حديث ولنا نريد الباري سيدنا معاذ بن جبل in this very hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he summarized the teaching of the deen into three main principles. So Sayyidina Abu Dhar used the word Hausani, recommended, instructed, commanded, all the things it comes in one single word, wasiyya. And the word wasiya is an instruction that comes from with love, with care. So Sayyidina Abu Dhar said, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recommended three important things. If you implement them, Rabbi subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses you with ease, with joy, with happiness in dunya and in akhirah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be sad with that. Number one, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, اِتَّقِ اللَّهَ حَيْثُمَا كُنْتُ Be conscious of Allah. Be aware of Allah. Wherever you are. Meaning, subhanallah, Allah is with me. Allah is watching me. Allah is protecting me. <coughs> Allah is giving me. Whatever I say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is hearing what I am saying. So the word taqwa is the wasiyah of Allah. And in fact, all forms of ibadah that we are doing is in order to achieve this food. So Allah said in Surah Al-Baqarah, O oh people worship your Lord, the one who has created you. He created people before you. <coughs> so you may achieve taqwa. In one of the early of the tabi'een, called Talqa ibn Habib, rahimahullah, and I always recommend our youngsters to get to know these righteous people. Write their names. Learn about them. So talk the Hadith people came to him. This is we are speaking about the first generation after Rasulullah. They said, Ya Talk, the fitna is spreading everywhere. There's a lot of confusion, a lot of this. So what shall we do? So imagine the people that they were test, they were speaking about fitna at that time. So what about us? What are we going to say? So fitna is spreading. What shall we do? He said, have taqwa. So he said, and what is taqwa? So he said, to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by doing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asking you to do but also doing it sincerely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah give us ikhlas. That is the ruh, the dinam of everything. If you don't have ikhlas, if you don't have this sincerity, it is like someone giving you the best of gifts that doesn't work. <coughs> if you have a, a, a mobile phone that it doesn't work, no matter how much beautiful it looks, it doesn't help. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa warned us from the thing. He said, you will come people, they will read the Quran beautifully but it doesn't cross their throats may allah save us so the soul of everything is taqwa so rasulullah so he said taqwa ibn harim said to worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to obey allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to obey rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sincerely 
to do whatever you do for the sake of Allah. And this is the big thing. That's why Sayyidina Imam Sufyan al-Thawi, rahimahullah, one of the greatest of our scholars said, I have never struggled with anything more than struggling with my intention and with sincerity. To achieve, to do something just purely for the sake of Allah. It is a big ask. May Allah grant us a ask. So the first instruction is taqwa. In subhanallah, may Allah make us from the people of taqwa. Rabbi promised a lot for the muttaqi. So, for example, we all go through a lot of hardship, a lot of calamities. And Allah said, Umay taqillah hayja'alahu makhraja. If you have taqwa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make a way out for you from all your problems. وَيَرْزُقْهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِرْ And Allah will give him and will sustain him from somewhere that he has never thought it would be a door of rest. And Rabbi promised the people of Taqwa to love them. And Rabbi also promised something that is that everyone is yearning for. The Ma'iyya. Allah to be with you. And Allah said, Inna Allah ma'an muttaqin. May Allah make us more of Taqwa. So the first wasiyah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is to be conscious of Allah. You are not Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching. Allah is listening to you. But also that is the source of strength. Man wajad Allah famada faqad. If you have Allah in your life, you miss nothing. And that's why Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, they said to him, look, the army of Fir'aun was behind him and the sea was in front of him. But Israel said, you put us in trouble. Where, where do we go now? He said, Halla inna ma'ya rabi if Allah is with me, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide me, Allah will never leave me alone. That was Sayyidina Hajar alayhi salam did when Sayyidina Ibrahim left her in the desert. No one was there in the desert with her. She asked one question, Ya Ibrahim, did Allah ask you to leave me in this desert with my child, with nothing? He said, yes. She said, then Allah will never leave me alone. That is number one. No matter how things difficult they are, to remember Allah and also to do all your ibadat remembering Rabbi subhanahu wa ta'ala number two Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said وَأَتْبِعِ السَّيِّئَةَ الْحَسَنَةَ تَنْقُرْهَا when you do something wrong which we all do then do something good immediately it will erase the bad thing that you've done and this is a rahma from a rahim subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we are humans. <coughs> we say things, we do things. We are not angels. And Rabbi knows that we are going to make mistakes. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, he did not make things difficult for us. He didn't say, don't make mistakes because that is impossible. He said, whenever you do something bad, immediately do something good. Try to rectify it. And do a lot of hasanat as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inna al hasanat yuzhibna yuzhibna sayyat. The good deeds will erase the bad deeds. So subhanAllah, we all make mistakes. So let us invest in doing all the good things as much as we can. And subhanAllah, there is something ajib that you see. Imam Muslim narrated a very beautiful hadith that speaks about the Sunnah al rawatib So Sayyidah Umm Habiba radiallahu anha narrated a hadith that we all know about the 12 Sunnah that we pray throughout the day. So Umm Habiba, the wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, I have never left it. I keep doing it since I've heard that from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Who narrated from Umm Habiba? Her brother Ambas ibn Abi Sufyan. So Ambas has said, since I've heard that hadith from Umar Habiba, I have been doing that, I've never stopped it, even one day. And Abu Rusan, the one who narrated from Ambas has said, I've been doing that, so consistent, consistency, doing everything. And this one, even Abu Dhar in another hadith said, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave me one seer, three things to, to pray, uh, duha, to pray with her, and he said, and I did not stop doing that. And 
Subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is a lot of good deeds that we can do. In another hadith narrated by Imam Ahmad, Abu Dhar himself asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Ya Rasulullah, if I say La ilaha illallah, is it from the good deeds that might help me erase the bad deeds that I have done? He said, saying La ilaha illallah is from the greatest of the things that you do. So by, by Jika, by giving sadaqah, by smiling, Allah has spread the doors of khair. There is so much that everyone can do. That's why the Sahaba they said, Ya Rasulullah, the rich people are taking all the doors of khair. What shall we do? We are poor. He said, what are you speaking about? He said, the rich people they are giving sadaqah. He said, we pray, they pray. We fast, they fast. We do the care, they do. They do the care. We read Quran, they read Quran. But they give sadaqah. We cannot give sadaqah because we don't have money. So Rasulullah said, you have much more time to do a lot of dhikr. And in another hadith, Rasulullah, authentic hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu asked the Sahab, Ala adullukum ala khayri a'malikum. Should I not tell you about the best of your deeds? And better for you than giving gold and silver. Better for you than even fighting your enemies, either they kill you or you kill them. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi is asking them about something better than jihad, better than the great of sadaqah. They said, Ya Rasulullah, please do. He said, Dhikrullah, to remember Allah. May Allah make us from the dhakirin. And Rabbi said in the Quran, great gift. He said, Fadkuruni, Adhkurkum. Remember me and I will remember you. La ilaha illallah. And if Allah remember you, will Allah punish you? This is the second wasiya. These two wasiyas are a gift from Rabbi subhanahu wa ta'ala to us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from the mutaqeen. Qul ma tisma'una wa astaghfirullah al-azim ali wa lakum fastaghfiruhu inna huwa al-wakur al-basta. Alhamdulillah, alhamdan kathira kama rahmat wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala khayr al-bashar wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man bi amrihi tamar. Dear Muslims, the third wasiyah the, uh, the first two are related to Rabbi subhanahu wa ta'ala between us and between Allah. To have taqwa and to rectify our bad deeds. The third is between us. So he said, And deal with people in the best way, in the best form. He did not say do with, deal with Muslims. With everyone around you in the best form. <laughs> Humility, forgiveness, <coughs> patience, care, respect, subhanallah. You know, allow me today just to finish this football with the example that I mentioned before. And I think if this figure was to be in any civilization, this figure was to be celebrated more than anything else. I'm speaking about no one other than Sayyidina Ali Zain al abidin the grandson of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa the son of Imam al Hussein sallallahu This is a man who saw his father, all his brothers, all men members of his family, killed in front of him, slaughtered in the worst way. He could have spent his life taking revenge of all those who killed members of his family, mourning about that. He could have been, subhanAllah, his heart filled of hatred for all the people who done this. But this man, he spent all his life in ibadah, in the remembrance of Allah. Not only this, in helping people, and spreading goodness, and giving sadaqat. Like no any other. Because his mother was Persian as well. So he was, mashallah, had a fair skin. So subhanAllah, in Medina, during his time, this is what all the people of Seer say. There was no one digging in Medina because he used to cook, he used to carry food, put it outside their houses. No one knew. He was doing it sincerely for the sake of Allah. 
Only people knew that he was doing all the things the day he died. From whom? From those who worshipped him. They saw the marks on his body. They were carrying all the things. And they saw all the, people, all the poor people coming out to start to beg and to ask people for help. So imagine if this person was to spend all his life taking revenge or spreading up, speaking about his pain. And it is a, a lot, subhanAllah. But people, they called him Zainul Abidin. It's not his name. Zainul Abidin is the beauty of all the worshippers. <coughs> because he invested his life in placing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we are all going to go. No one is going to remain in this dunya. But to be able to forgive. And this is what we learn from our guide. And our Shafi'i and Akhirah Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How did he forgive the people of Mecca when he entered Mecca? All those who are saying things about him, doing things to him and to his companions. May Allah forgive our sins, purify our hearts, purify our intentions. May Rabbi subhanahu wa ta'ala in the suffering of our brothers and sisters in Palestine. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their suffering. May Rabbi shower them with his rahmah. May Rabbi subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them the honor and the dignity they deserve. Allahumma inas al-Qaf from indika hadi biha qlubana. Tadimu abiha shamlana. Turumma biha shahtana. Turudda biha ulfatana. Tuslih biha dinana. اللهم اجعلنا من المتقين اللهم اجعلنا من المتقين اللهم اجعلنا من المتقين رب اغفر لنا ولابائنا وامهاتنا واجدادنا واجداد اجدادنا ولمشايخنا ولمن علمنا حرفا واحدا من القران العظيم يا رب يا الله بارك في هذا الجمع المبارك وفي هذا المسجد المبارك في قائمين على هذا المسجد المبارك واجعله من منارات الحق واجعله من منارات الخير واجعله يا الله من منارات الهداية ونسألك يا رحمن يا رحيم كما جعلتنا في هذا المسجد أن تجمعنا مع الحبيب العظيم صلى الله عليه وسلم في الفردوس الأعلى وتسقنا من حوضه الشريف بيت الشريف شريفة شربة هنيئة لا نذكر بعدها سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المسلمين والحمد لله رب العالمين Thank <laughs> you.